a closer look at defenseman Justin Barron. So as I was writing this video, Justin Barron was on the ice in Brossard with the Habs and not in Laval with the Rocket. Will the 20-year-old newly acquired defenseman get some time with the big club right away? What kind of player did the Habs get in this 6'2", 195-pound puck-moving defenseman they received in the trade that sent winger Arturi Lekkonen to the Colorado Avalanche? In this video, I'll go over some scouting reports and show you a few highlights of our new hopeful future star defenseman, Justin Barron. Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs, where you get your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge. Hey, so I have to bring you this thing uh, I, I received after I filmed this video. It was sent to me by Jeff. Everyone knows Jeff GGR. And it's about uh, Justin Barron, so uh, real perfect timing here. And this is something that Chris Letang is talking about, and he uh, mentioned this on his podcast. He has a podcast. I'm going to read you the article. It's from Habs Fanatic. So you want to look that up, HabsFanatic.com. And uh, this talks about... Um, the article is called Sidney Crosby harshly criticizes the trade between the Canadians and the Avalanche. And you'll, you, you may wonder why. Okay, so I'm going to read you the article. As you obviously know, the Montreal Canadiens made a major trade with the Avalanche on Monday at the trade deadline. Finnish forward Arturi Lekkonen moved to Colorado, Colorado while promising young defenseman Justin Barron went the other way, along with a second round pick. Reactions were numerous following the trade here in Quebec, among journalists and fans, but it also made people react to the in the NHL locker room. In particular, in Pittsburgh Penguins locker room, defenseman Chris Letang on the Lavois Letang podcast revealed that his popular teammate Sidney Crosby had, severe, had severely criticized the transaction. Why? So this is a quote from TVS Sports, so it's coming from there. Sidney Crosby has known so many talented players that he knows them when he sees them. In his eyes, Justin Barron is clearly in that category. In fact, Crosby believes the Colorado Avalanche made a mistake in trading the promising defenseman to the Montreal Canadiens. Latang added this. Upon hearing of the trade, Crosby said, I would never have done this if I were the Avalanche. This kid here, he's a really good hockey player. He's ready to play in the NHL, and he's going to be a good player. Anybody wondering why he knows this, by the way, Barron is from Halifax. Crosby's from Nova Scotia. They skate together in the offseason. All those players, McKinnon, all that. So he knows him. Um, he goes on, this goes on, uh, wow, apparently Crosby really knows Barron well, he does, they practice and play together last summer, blah, 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 um, and 87, uh, number 87, that's Crosby, really praised him to Latang. Crosby is unequivocal, the Colorado Avalanche made a big mistake in trading Justin Barron, and it's nothing against Arturi Lekkonen. We understand that for Tricolor, that's the Habs fans, coming from a guy like Sidney Crosby, this is extremely pleasing to hear. Yes, it is. Moreover, knowing his proximity, proximity to the Avalanche's star player, Nathan McKinnon, we imagine that the face of the Colorado franchise must not have been too happy either to see the young Baron change the, his address. Really looking forward to seeing the kid in action, as I am, as I'm sure all you are, and uh, in Montreal over the next few years. Long time, hopefully. Solid addition from GM Kent Hughes, who's done a fantastic job so far. I wanted to bring you that here in this video. I couldn't pass that up after hearing it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section about that and the video in general. So Justin Barron did a after the practice uh, that he was in, Brossard, they, you know, the players do this little media scrum. So they put him out there for a media scrum. And so there's a few notes right right now uh, from that. Um, the media really likes Justin Barron already. So he took French immersion uh, in Halifax from grade one to grade 12. And he takes questions in French. And the first question he answered, like at all, his first question ever, he answered it in French as well. And then he he answered in English after. They asked him about it. He said he mostly likes to answer in English. But his French is great. His French is great. It's better than mine. He does sound English when he, you know, that he's an English person, but his French is great. So um, the things I picked up from this. He models himself after Alex Peterangelo. 
Uh, so uh, growing up, he always admired uh, Alex Pietrangelo, and he kind of models himself after that guy. He believes he can play power play, penalty kill, and is a 200-foot player. And that's a lot to do with his skating ability. Calls himself a two-way defenseman. My dog's going to bark. He says it was a stacked lineup in Colorado and is excited for the opportunity to play in the NHL regularly, potentially, this year with Montreal. So he's really excited about that. He's also excited to potentially play with Caden Gooley somewhere down the line um, on a top six pairing. He was paired up with uh, Gooley on the top uh, pairing at the World Junior Championships. And uh, they have chemistry together, he said. And you have to think that was a big part of the Habs thinking uh, when they acquired him and or maybe even targeted uh, him when they were thinking about Colorado. He says skating is the best attribute of his. And he says that he was always a good skater. He'll wear number 52. So look for number 52 when he's playing. Uh, he would have chosen number 20, which is the number he's been wearing. Uh, but um, Chris Weidman wears it. Um, so now I'm writing this. This is not something he said. Um, maybe he'll change that uh, next season to number 20. Um, I guess I don't expect Weidman to be back. Okay, so this is um, from the first scouting report. I've got from two of them. The first one is the Hockey Writers, and it's from March 20th. No, March 2020. The second is from Last Word on Hockey, and that is from May also of 2020. So from the Hockey Writers one. It's a little shorter. The other one's a little longer. 20-year-old um, defenseman from Halifax, Nova Scotia, six foot, 295 pounds, right side defenseman, shoots right. He was the 25th pick overall by Colorado in 2020. His junior team, Halifax Mooseheads. So he had an injury, which was a blood clot. Before the blood clot, he was thought to be a top 15 pick and potentially top 10 and I have something here about that. So injuries and other maladies often come with the territory of playing sports, obviously. It can cause a prospective top 15 pick in the draft to slide further down the board than they probably deserve. This was the case for Halifax Mooseheads captain Justin Barron. He was diagnosed with a blood clot, which caused him to miss the last several months of the season. That was his pre-draft season. Given an A grade by NHL Central Scouting, Barron was ranked the number 16 skater in North America and was projected as high as a top 15 selection in this year's draft. As expected, the injury and missed time caused Barron to slide down the draft board as team after team passed on the defenseman due to hesitations about his health. He slid all the way to the avalanche at number 25. As a result, Joe Sackick and the Avs may have gotten one of the steals of the draft. And it's kind of rem reminiscent about Cole Caulfield, who, because of his size, he kind of slid down to Montreal at number 15. And, um, well, we see how that's working out right now. So, yeah, this could be a steal for Montreal in the trade. Um, so I've got some more here. Barron is an extremely mobile, puck-moving defenseman. He's an intelligent, big, smooth skater. He's fast makes a good first pass in the defensive zone, or can skate the puck out of the zone. Rarely, uh, really solid transition game. Gets involved on the rush and has a strong shot from the blue line. Walks the line with skill. Can eat up the big moments or minutes. Good playmaker. Potential power play quarterback. Makes good decisions with the puck. Rarely gets beaten to the net and keeps the play to the outside. His strengths, defensive play, skating, gap control, uh, hockey IQ and vision, playmaking. Their projected for him is a uh, top four defenseman. That's his potential. Next report is from Last Word on Hockey. Like I said, in May of 2020, that was his draft year. Um, skating. So they go skating offense. I think then it's projection, and uh, then I give you my my opinion. Outstanding skater helps him to have a strong two way game. Joins in the rush, pinches in at the blue line, and can still get back defensively. Has a, a long, smooth stride. Generates high end top speed and excellent acceleration in both directions. 
Smooth pivots allow them to transition quickly from offense to defense and vice versa. Excellent edge work and agility. Strong on his skates. Offense. Makes smart first passes to start the transition. Strong skating and good stick handling allow him to skate the puck out of danger and start the rush, though mostly he likes to headman the puck and join the rush as a trailer. Smart about when to join the rush and doesn't take unnecessary risk. Sees the ice well, makes good decisions with the puck. He does this in the offensive zone as well. His vision and playmaking ability allow him to play the point. He's not overly creative, referring, preferring to uh, the smart, safe play most of the time. Maybe Coach Marty can help him be more creative, uh, especially with the drills and the stuff that they do in practice. He has a good shot from the point. He fires on net with a low shot, which allows for deflections and rebounds for his teammates. He can sneak down into the, into the circles to fire his hard wrist shot, which has a good quick release. Really good at walking the line, opening up shooting and passing lanes and creating chances. His defense. Disciplined defensive game. His skating helps him uh, defend one-on-one. -on -one. His excellent agility and edge work allows him to maintain good gap control. Hard to beat one-on-one. -on -one. Keeps himself between the opponent and the net, forcing opponents to the outside and into bad shooting angles. Not a huge hitter, prefers a disciplined positional game. And I wrote this part. Should benefit from a partner that plays a strong physical game like a Caden Gooley. He has the size and can play a physical game as needed, handling uh, his man along the boards and fighting for position in front of the net. Has a long active stick, or at least that's what his girlfriend says, which he uses to uh, cut down passing and shooting lanes and break up plays. Willing to block shots and shows his high hockey IQ in his ability to read the play, anticipate passes, and create turnovers. My personal favorite are apple and cherry. So his projection and comparison from last word on hockey, if he stays healthy and develops properly, he has the potential to be a top pairing defender, playing big stud minutes. He may not reach elite offensive defenseman status, but projects as a good second unit power play quarterback, top 4D. Stylistically, his game is like Boston's Charlie McAvoy, but his hockey idol, the guy he himself says he, mo he models himself after, is uh, Vegas Golden Knights' P Alex Pietrangelo. So my prediction for him is a top four puck-moving defenseman, a two-way defenseman, decent production, plays the power play and PK units, and he's a big minute eater. As much as I loved Arturi Lekkonen, GM can't use fleeced Avs GM Joe Sackick and stole this player from the Avs. And it makes you think, how much did, did the Avs really want Lekkonen? And they must have really wanted him because they gave up a really good prospect here that probably is out of character for Joe Sackick to give up in a deal. So I'm sure they feel Arturi Lekkonen could be that piece that pushes them over the top in the playoffs. Justin Barrow should be a fan favorite for years to come. So now I've given, I've kind of left out his weaknesses. So till now, there's nothing about anything that's bad about his game. So otherwise, Barron sounds like a number one defenseman, fully NHL ready, and he's not. So he won't be coming to the team and automatically earning a regular spot in the top four. He's going to have to, he's really going to have to earn that spot. But what I think Montreal will do is take a look at him in a few games, I don't know how many, to evaluate where he's at in his development and make a plan for him. If he does well, he could stick around for the rest of the season or they could decide that he'd be better served developing a bit more at the AHL level. Either way, Justin Barrow will be an NHL defenseman at some point in the next season or two at the most. His ceiling should be top four, speedy, two-way defenseman, a very mobile puck mover with decent offense and a decent physical game as well and, and a decent 
if not good, defensive game too. I can see him paired up with Caden Gooley on a second pairing, securing the Habs blue line for many years to come. All right. I'm really looking forward to seeing this kid in a game. I'm, maybe it'll be on the weekend. Um, so, I mean, how about you guys? Let me know in the comment section if you're really looking forward to seeing him play. And what about him you're interested in and excited about? Let me know in the comment section. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Stay safe till the next one. And uh, peace out, y'all. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, listen, hey, check out that video over there in the corner. It's right over there.